Okay kids, it's DK at Mr. V Amps and we are going to have another amp build. Um, this is uh, 5E7M. 5E7 is the <clears throat> amp one would call the 50s era bandmaster. If you like calling things tweed, you could call it a tweed bandmaster. I don't like that word, I just don't, so I refer to it as a 50s bandmaster. Um, Yes, I'm eccentric, but this has a modification. Ted Weber decided that instead of <clears throat> the treble bass and presence control, that having a treble middle bass was a better option. So that's why this is 5E7M. I kind of think that that's a good idea. Um, the 6A14 uh, video, which I have close to 10 hours of footage for um, is taking well over a day to render so that is coming soon maybe this will even beat it to YouTube <laughs> I don't know but I'm gonna do this in the more traditional documentation style where I just try to show you things one at a time okay so here's our chassis and I peeled the laser sticker cutting stuff off and you can actually see the Controls here are treble, middle, bass, volume, bright, you know, normal, all that kind of stuff. This is the this is actually printed correctly, but I opted. I have a uh, overlay panel for this to to uh, change the visuals. I have an overlay that is white with black lettering which will go with my color scheme a little bit more, which is a little different color scheme because that's how we roll here. start by installing the power transformer and I'm gonna put a grounding tab on the one corner there for the electric plug. Okay, so the choke fits there. And then the output transformer is gonna fit here. Now on the diagram, rather than running half the wires through here and half through there like one would normally consider doing that makes the most logical sense to run them all through there choke included so I put the grommet donut thing in there and then the output transformer is going to go diagonally and the only two wires I technically need from the output transformer are the green one and the black one, the 4 ohm tap. The other wires can be rolled up and zip tied outside or something like okay, that. Okay, so those two are on. And it shows them all coming through the lower hole and they just fit. Just, just fit. And then the other two, the yellow and the white wire, I wrapped up and put some shrink wrap on them after insulating the tips. All right, install tube sockets next, I suppose. Okay, so I put on tube sockets. That's gonna be for the rectifier, which is a 5U4. These are gonna be for 6L6s. Um, GC is what Weber says to stick in it. Originally, though, these probably had 6L6 GBs, which are like lower wattage. Uh, there are equivalents of 6L6 GBs floating around. I'm gonna try some hopefully they come in the mail and uh, there's our preamp tubes which are marked all as 12a X's on our diagram here but that first one could be a 12a Y I think that was more original to the 50s I guess I should make the circuit board okay now. so I haven't even soldered anything in yet and I already see my first modification okay so you see the two resistors there and then there's a diode in between them that Shabaya circuit it's here on the schematic and if you want an adjustable bias you replace the 56k resistor with a 50 um, ohm linear pot right like there see and then um, and then you have adjustable bias well they also recommend um, changing the 6.8 to a 4.7k so 
I'm going to do that just because I want to experiment between a GC and a GB tube and I'm going to need to be able to adjust the bias for that. Boy, that was like an instant circuit board manufacturing. Yay! So, there are some traces and things you have to put on the back of the board and you can either link the leads from the components or you can run wires or you know whatever you need to do. The only thing that doesn't show up well Boy, that looks washed out. There we go. That doesn't show up well on the um, diagram here is over the top of the 1.5K resistor and a 56K resistor is they actually do have the 0.047 capacitor, which on the schematic is said adjust for best sound. That kind of jumps over the top of them. I put it up there so I can get at it if I do need to. The other thing I changed is I went with my mod brand uh, capacitors. They're 16 microfarad, 475 volt. The included capacitors are 16 microfarad, 450 volt. Nothing wrong with these, okay? I'm not going to disrespect them or anything. But the leads are a little short, so they will make it end-to-end -end across the board. But I needed to, needed to, wanted to connect the bridges for the ground so you can see on the diagram here we have bridging for the grounds where one goes to the next and it's just easier to do that if your components have longer leads so that was my executive decision there secondarily the way the holes are mounted for mounting the circuit board one of our resistors here would have run right over the top of it had I just mounted it the way, you know, pictured, just go diagonal, whatever. So, you know, I rerouted the lead for that sake. But otherwise, pretty straightforward. Uh, next, I'm going to do the filaments. So, since the filaments go to the light, I needed to install the light. And since the, since I have this white panel, I, was, I need to install this panel on top of here before attaching the light. And I attach the non-used ground switch over here as a secondary thing to hold this down um, and then we're going to proceed to install the filaments and we're going to come from the we're going to take the green pair of wires here on our transformer and go to the lamp and then to the appropriate pins of the 6L6 and 12AX7 tubes the 5U4, of course, gets a 5-volt filament winding, which is uh, not included in the 6-volt winding for the rest of the tubes. Okay, so we got green pair off of the transformer to the lamp. Tube, 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 tube. And I ran the filaments along the bottom there. That usually works okay on these 50-style amps. If it doesn't, I'll deal with it, but I think it'll work okay. Okay, so our rectifier tube gets the yellow filament wires on uh, 2 and 8. And off of pin 8, I have that one red wire that's running up to the standby switch. And on the side of the standby switch, there is a capacitor. You'll see that shrink wrap, the white, going down to a lug on the corner of the transformer. So I'm using that as a ground. It is... There's the standby switch. There is a capacitor to ground that is primarily for noise. Um, our filaments for the 5U4 are going to 5 and 8. And then the high voltage is going to 6 and 4. And we're using the red leads, not the red and white. We're using the red leads. So the red and white are not connected in this case. Um, before wrapping those up and getting them out of the way though, I will need the red yellow and the green yellow, which are these two. These need to go to ground and I put a couple of uh, studs there on that copper post to ground too. Okay, so I did ground those two and then I put the pots in position. All of these are one meg audio pots except for middle is a 100k um, everything was marked 
I put a couple of the uh, input jacks just in position just so I could square up this brass plate. See this brass plate goes between the chassis and then I got the plastic overlay up there too. So get to make a sandwich. Okay, so the circuit board screws down over there and over there in that corner. So I got it screwed down in there. That was not fun. That's probably one of the least fun things to try to do is cram this board in here. Um, I'm going to solder the grounds, which are our naked wires. We're going to put those up on the brass plate. Yeah. And, uh, and then we'll probably start wiring some tubes. Okay, so I did solder the grounds. Uno, dos, uh, tres, cuatro, cinco. And then see, so this is, this is my bodge wire I put in. This is not necessary because this brass plate is on ground, but I still always sort of take it to my star just so it makes me feel better. It, you don't have to do that, but I do because I'm weird. Um, so now I can start wiring the front stuffs and the back stuffs to the tubes. And I think I want to save that for tomorrow because this is my amp and I don't have a deadline. Okay, so today I wired up the front panel, the pots anyway. Got treble, middle, bass, volume one and volume two, and the input jacks. Um, there's a couple, this capacitor there, this capacitor there to ground, and then there's a resistor that goes over the top. The capacitor over here is, you might be able to see it peeking out from behind that wire, that's the yellow one. Um, the shrink wrap is hooked to the resistor, which is right there, it's kind of hiding under the corner. But I put uh, insulation, you know, over the resistor so it wouldn't possibly ground on anything. There's our cap that goes to ground, we've got our bright cap on the bright channel. And then we got all our impact, in, yeah, input jacks hooked up. Um, this one was not particularly tricky. Um, I've had some that are a little harder. A decent amount of room to work in here, so it wasn't too terrible. Um, just the stacked stack jacks can get a little funky, but we got it. It's good. It's good. So now I have all this other bottom row. Uh, we'll save that for the next round. Okay, kids, so it's the next day. I'm going to have to give myself a break. I hooked up the preamp tubes according to the diagram. There's not anything particularly weird other than it's kind of hard to work at this strange 90 degree angle. Um, the second tube there has a 100 ohm resistor. Doing a jump across there. Got those wired up. Now because I have the filament wires laying on the bottom there, I uh, bridged up and sort of tried to make these wires stay up above there so they wouldn't be picking up noise from the filament wires. That's my thought. Maybe it's a dumb thought. Sometimes I do make dumb decisions. But usually I don't. So we're there. So we still have the power tubes, output transformer, and the rest of the input end of the power supply. As well as a bias circuit. we got to finish that up. Because remember, we're putting variable bias in this rather than bonehead. This one, I'm sorry. But yes, they do here. They show a hole there in the chassis. There ain't no hole in that chassis. It ain't there. It doesn't exist. So the wires are coming from over here. We got the choke hooked up there, those two black wires. And the blue and the brown, which are from the... Those are to the output transformer. And then the red is also to the output transformer. Uh, kind of... This is unique the way this is jumped up like this. And... Um, I'm used to 60s and 70s amps, so this is this is different. Um, I again, I tried to match it as close as possible. The blue and white wire, which you can see there, it looks pretty much blue. I'm sorry, it's got a red stripe on it. That goes down to that resistor, which I did the alternate value for, and then the resistor that's not there, which is you know there on their picture, is a 56k. That is jumped out and replaced by that potentiometer to give me adjustable bias okay so we're pretty much cooking I just basically have to hook in the power switch and the fuse and clean up some of these wires a little bit and then we're ready to kick the tires and light the fires um, 
I'm just out of practice, I guess, working in one of these C-shaped chassis. I'm used to working in the flat chassis, 60 style. Um, it's not as pretty as I'd like it to be, but uh, at the same time, it could be a lot worse. I'm really, you know, I'm totally satisfied with the way the top end turned out. That's nice and tidy, but the bottom end is just, there's too much happening down there to make it happy for me but you know I'm just nitpicking if it works good it works good and uh, you know how many people are gonna just open the amp to Google at it you know other than cork sniffers they'll be mad anyway because those aren't you know those aren't magic capacitors they're just standard yellow tubular capacitors okay so I got the power cord hooked up now this shipped with an international power cord which instead of being white black and green it's yellow green stripe blue and brown um, sometimes the way they list those on the diagram doesn't seem right so I beeped it out with a meter to figure out which one was the hot wire and I put the hot wire to the fuse and the switch and then into the transformer so I think at this point I can kick the tires and light the fires okay so I creeped it up on power I like this 5u4 that's pretty cool looking in it big bottle yeah, these are garbage tubes. Um, my 6L6s are garbage, and that's kind of by design. Um, I needed to see how high the voltage and currents and things are in this to know whether I need to use GCs or I can use something else. I wanted to use like a GB equivalent, um, and then I have 12AX, 12AX, and 12AY because that's more original to the thing. and. So she's working. Um, I made a little boo-boo with the input jack so only one of the two pairs were working. And I realized what I did there so I've uh, fixed that. Um, so we should have all four input jacks. Let me see if, I, if this pair is working now. Yeah. Definitely. So that pair is working. So yeah, we're, we're functional. I did bring it up on the Variac. We're only running at about 80 volts or so. I haven't gotten it up to the full wall voltage, but um, I'll do that and then I'll get an idea of where these tubes live at power-wise. Okay, so with the voltages on this puppy, the 6L6GC is the appropriate tube for it. Definitely. <coughs> um... We got an oscillation. If we're running at full voltage, or even if we're running close to voltage, you can hear it. It's, it's a, it's a honk. It's a big, ugly honk. And if this uh, were, you know, just plugged into the wall and then flipped off a standby, she'd squeal like a, like an animal. Now, the first suggestion they've got here is, um, it actually says somewhere in here. If a, let's see, did they say say it on the schematic, right? If a Loud oscillation occurs, reverse the blue and brown wires. Yep. So, we can try that, or I can try to reroute them. Seems like if I pop the phase inverter tube out, that one there, the noise quells, so it's getting from the power tubes back to the phase inverter. Well, Not good. that's pretty much a complete and total surprise. <clears throat> Don't touch the blue wire. <clears throat> Because it's going to hurt. But that's high voltage. Don't touch that. And the brown wire is too long now. But I switched the blue and the brown wire. And the howl is gone. I also checked these tubes. Because it didn't seem to want to howl with my other tubes. But they were old and tired. And on my matching meter thing. They pulled a 6. Where these puppies pull a 9. These are pretty, pretty tough tubes. But we're running at just about full voltage here. And no issue. Huh. So I guess I'm going to power down and surgically, um, you know, couple those wires and square everything up and make it look pretty, and that's how it'll be. Huh. Never would have thunk it, because, I mean, before you could hear it when you got up to, I don't know, 100 volts or so, it'd start to sing. And if you got it up to 110, 120, pooh, she just howled like, a, like an SOB. It's like just a big old honk. 
like a angry Canadian goose attacking you. Doesn't do that now. Don't touch the blue wire, dummy. That's 400 and some odd volts. Okay, that's cool. So we're working at full wall voltage. She's a loud one. That's just, that's this. It's not, not anybody's fault. I know a bunch of you guys are like, why aren't you tone testing this with a guitar and blah, blah, blah. Because that's work. I just want to get it working. I've already checked the tone stack works. And both of our channels here work. This thing is freaking loud. I mean, just makes the poor, just makes the poor uh, speaker want to jump out of its skin at almost no volume, which is... I guess what we want, and she's pretty quiet too. Here, check this. I mean, for something that's you know pushing 40, 50 watts, that's that's not a. Uh, so it's, it's quiet boy too. Who would have thunk it, man? So yeah, I had to reverse the the blue and the brown leads off the output transformer to make it quit doing that. I really wish there was a way to make this neater, but there's just so much junk going on around here. I tried to weave the wires around and things so they're not coupling to each other. And I mean, it works and it's quiet. And it's loud. Well, it's quiet until you want it to be loud and then it's loud. So, yeah, I think we're groovy. Time to, I guess solder up the speakers and whatever this is the one thing that stinks though let's see can you see that in the corner see that slot that slots where the screw goes to mount it into the cabinet but they didn't put no plastic or no hole in the plastic for that so I'm gonna have to drill that out on both ends so I can mount this in the cabinet but we got to get the cabinet ready and I hate to break it to you kids I know this is a Tweed era circuit. I didn't get no Tweed cabinet. Are you kidding me? Not me. I'm too crazy to do a Tweed cabinet. And besides, I really just don't dig the Tweed look. It's not my style. So I made something crazier. Okay, speaker, 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 jack. They're wired in parallel. Pluses to pluses, minuses to minuses. Okay, take three as I block the light. We have our traditional oxblood cabinet covering front thing there. Cowhide, velvety, velvety goodness cowhide on the side. And cowboy boot leather on the top and the bottom. White control panel. Loud input, not so loud input for the normal channel. Loud input, not so loud input for the bright channel. Treble middle base and two volumes. Pretty straightforward. Often a standby switch and a ground switch that doesn't do anything, so you can just flip it for fun if you're bored. And then come around to the back. Yes, I could put the negative feedback loop in that if I wanted to. Um, got our tubes 5U4, 6L6GC times 2, 12AX, 12AX, and I did a 12AY. This thing is still louder and louder than loud can be and then we've got three 10 inch Alnico speakers there so and uh, how's it sound I like it I I'm actually surprised at how much this thing will roar if I drive a lot of signal in it from my guitar and just overdrive it it overdrives surprisingly smoothly and sounds very punk rock to me which is great and I can't really demonstrate that to you and the amount of not noisy it is is excellent. So this project turned out really good. idea what to serenade you all with right now it's been a while since I've picked up a guitar because I've been building amps but uh, 
I would say this is a successful project. All it needs is a name. I christened this amplifier the Beef Master. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about that whole howling thing it was doing and why flipping those leads worked. Um, you probably want to go back to, I don't know, Uncle Doug's uh, amp school. That'll explain it really well for you. These amps have a negative feedback loop in them, as many amps do. And that negative feedback loop, if the polarity going to the output tubes, or actually the polarity going to the speaker, is backwards, it becomes a positive feedback loop. And it ends up uh, as if you were to put a microphone directly in front of a speaker. It just regenerates and howls. So that can be fixed by either what I did, switching the blue and the brown leads here on our tubes, or you could flip-flop the plus and the minus of the um, speaker on your output transformer, and it should have the same effect. So if you want to know why it was howling, go study negative feedback loops. Peace.